There was no release when he was thinking about going backwards. And then I just want one foot. So I'll put that in front of there. That foot's going to get in the way. That's where I want the rope right there. But I'm going to move his hind end off the other way. Yeah, from this angle right here, not not from that one, from from this one right here, I'll pull on that right there. And he's going to kick. They're going to kick. And I don't have any gloves on. And what I'm after is to set that set that foot back and and set it behind him right on his toe like that. And see me put slack in that rope yeah. when he's right there. When you get those horses where they'll let you do that, then you can you can work with their feet. But it ain't gonna be like this when you first put that rope no. on there. They're gonna. <laughs> and you don't want to be directly behind them, even if you're far enough away they can't kick you. They'll kick that rope off and that rope will come right back at you. So you need to be at a 45 from the, from the hind leg here to do this. And it's, you can, you don't have to have them tied up, but probably in the beginning stage it's best to have them tied up. Okay? Because you, you're not going to be able to hold them. Once you get them where they're, they're like this, then, you, you know, you can do about anything in the world. This is a, a tremendous respect building tool. And they're going to kick, so they're not kicking against that that rope. And they're going to hit it when they go forward. They're going to kick to slack. They're going to hit it when they go forward. And and if you've got it above that pastern, it's going to cause an adverse reaction because it's clamping down on the tendons. But right there, you will get this kind of a reaction right here. And again, I'm waiting and watch, see that leg relax. As that leg relaxes, then I can let him have the reward of that. Okay? And the, the, the timing of the release is important. You know, he, if he's, you know, fighting and kicking, there's no release. And stay there, and you're going to be out here thinking, man, i got to hold a whale here and just wait on him until... Now, them studs, I'd recommend that you have a stick with a hook on it so that you can take that off without getting your head up there. Yeah. But that, that's why I use that, that metal Hondo uh, too, because it, it'll, it'll let me push that rope like that. If you're in a small enough area, yes. You, you know, you can stay out in the center of the pen when they're going around. There, there might be times where you have to let them go. And, but then when, it, when, it, when it's opportunity sets itself up, try to hold them there. If you, you know, usually they'll, they'll test that three or four times and then they'll say, this ain't working. And then they'll, pretty soon they'll, you'll feel like you can lead them by hind foot. And I don't really want that from a, shearing perspective. I just want to be able to pull that leg out and get it relaxed and get him set on that toe. I like to lead him by front foot. Yeah. And and you can you can do this too. Uh, uh, I don't think I've roped this cold feet so you're getting to see him uh, you know kind of a pristine When I say pristine, I mean a normal horse response. That's different than a horse that's been trained to fight you <laughs> or trained to agree with you. So what I do here, and, and I usually usually have the lead rope, and usually in, when you're out front of them, they'll lead 
pretty decently. So I'll, I'll pull on that and wait. Now, now right here, sometimes they'll go to pawing. So you got to be a little bit uh, mindful here. He's feeling that pressure, and I'm waiting on him. There, he moved. In, he, he might move three feet before he moves one. That's okay. I just want him to lead here with this one. Pull out here where I've got a. There's that that step and see he, when he started moving his feet, I I quit doing what I'm doing. When I move, he should be thinking, preparing to move. If I move and he doesn't, then he's going to feel that rope come tight on him. When he thinks about doing that, he feels a release. There was no release when he was thinking about going backwards. It doesn't matter even if if you've got them to where you can go out and get their attention and they'll hook on to you and walk along behind you without anything on them. That's different than this. You see, when you when you had the interference of a halter, you had the interference of something on their feet. Now now we've got something that maybe doesn't want to follow you. So so a horse coming to you, following you when when you've got something like this. Which emotion do you think would be elevated from that? You know, respect is going to come quite a bit higher. So that, that's why I do that to these horses, not to, not to, uh, I feel like that in the relationship between a, a horse and a person, that there's only room for one leader. And it can't be the horse. <laughs> and so respect to me is is probably the highest priority item. <clears throat> I can I can deal with a horse that's afraid of me a lot easier than I can one that's, that's so bold that he doesn't feel like he's got any reason to do anything for me. <laughs> so, so this then is what a and ones that are wanting to stomp their feet. And again, you want to do this when they're, when they're untied. I'll take the buckle in and point it back to that back leg. And I'll come around this leg and put it, put it through that first loop and get it down around that pasture. Okay, and then, then I'll pick that foot up and then Take it and wrap it up around to his leg right here. That's what they're going to do to you when you get under them. And they're trying to walk off. So we'll help them a little bit. <laughs> So I'm I'm not pulling him, I'm not leading him, I'm just sending him around and I'm, I'm making him making him move his back feet. And while he's doing this, that's what he's gonna do when you get when you get that leg picked up. So just well let him work that out. Now he's still still not accepting it. That rope, that hobble needs to be tight like that. If it's not, if it's not that tight, you'll 
Yeah, he's going, and then he'll get his foot out. Or he'll hit himself on the other leg. Here, deep breath. See that change in attitude? I thought there was until I got ready to take it out, and then he said, I'm going to lay on you, not so. Notice that I'm not pulling on this rope. See, if you get in a pulling match when you're doing this here, it's going to cause him to fight. I don't, I don't want to be the, the reason that he fights. I want him to, that's the reason that he's fighting. He said he can't get his foot, but it's not that I've created the fight. I want to be the hero here and come up and let him out of that, see. And I've seen horses that, that wouldn't let me do a foot and do that to one foot, and then they'll stand there and let me do the rest of them in about the same period of time that you're seeing me work with this horse. This is not a... This is not an abbreviated time period. I mean, even even MO outlaws that, that haven't been handled, if you present things to them correctly, the horse will choose the path of least resistance <laughs> every time. So, but anyway, those those tools right there were probably going to be your your best friends, at, you know, at that thing. And then then your horse here is going to, you know, he's going to be glad to come to your house. 